Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Jerry. Jerry, this is me time. Just kidding. We're good friends. We're good friends. We heckle. Uh, I have to have fit well, No, we scathe each other. Uh, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory what an open Q&A is. We're going to be informal, conversational, kind of anything and everything, whether it's creative process, how our team works, what maybe isn't working for you, and what you are trying to, problems you're trying to solve, and, you know, I, I can't guarantee we'll have solutions for every inquiry, but at the end of the day, this is a great opportunity for us to just, even just kind of go, okay, I'm not the only one who wants to kill my team, you know, or something, you know, like, whatever it is that you're struggling with, and you're like, how do I solve this problem. I don't want to kill my team, by the way. I was, that was a bad example. I love my team. Um, so I'll introduce you to everyone. I'm Joel. If you've seen me, I'm seeing. You know who I am. I don't need to go into anything. And if you haven't seen me, I'm seeing. Boy, did you miss out. This is Jake Epperson. He's a designer on our team. Alana Michaela. She is one of the, well, I, I keep saying one of the video people. She, me and her are the only video people. She's the other video person. Um, and she also Overseas, uh, we just launched, um, over this last year, we launched Radiant Stories, and it started kind of as a feature at blog sort of thing, kind of a la Humans of New York, if you know what I'm talking about. And now we're launching it into podcast films and the blog, and so if you go to radiant.church slash stories, you'll see a little section for film, for uh, podcast, and the blog, and they're really awesome, and all we're doing is just you know, uh, sharing people's testimonies and stories, and, and, and it's amazing how powerful it is to connect with people. So Anna as well, and Elena, I work on that together. Anna is another designer. She does a, like a lot of our, pretty much all of our print stuff for the most part. Really excellent lay. I mean, if you've seen any of our books and stuff that we've done, that's all her. She's incredible. And But also really diving in deep with the stories. It's kind of a, a, a new project for us. So we're learning as we go. Um, and then Ashley is our air traffic controller. She makes sure none of us crash our planes. But she is, She I would say she's a, you know, project manager, production manager, whatever, but she's a lot of things and she's an incredible systematic mind in terms of project management and helping get all people on the same page. She's a really brilliant seasoned mind and uh, I'm really thankful for this crew. We've been together, I mean, this team in this iteration, you know, without any transition has been almost a year, well, a little less, but a little over a year for the rest of us, on our a little bit longer than that even. But, you know, when I came on, it was kind of built from the ground up. So this is kind of where it's at. Jake started as an intern and, uh, and is now full-time on the team and, and, and just a gifted artist. So we, we're really new as a team, but at the same time, there's a lot of overlap in the Venn diagram of r relationships and history and all that stuff. So thanks, bro. And uh, so it feels like we've been together longer than we have, but there's still a lot we're learning. So we'd love to process with you. So does anyone have anything they want to lead off with? could be about any... Discipline, genre of work, whatever, systems, anything at all. Jerry. Greatest disaster. Greatest disaster? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. The past year? Not the greatest disaster from people who don't work here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy who had so many typos on his print pieces, we paid more for reprints than his salary. Oh. So he it didn't enough. work out. Uh, talk about the solid collective at all? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, Who's the original idea to, to start that? Is me and Caleb. Caleb yeah. yeah, me and Caleb. We, I, uh, I was trying to find an audio Bible. I was writing a script that was meant, uh, it was gonna, it was for a project that was based on the life of the book, uh, the, the life of Job. And so I was like, I'm gonna listen to Joe while I write this. And all I could find was like terrible William Shatner-esque, like, and the Lord saith, you know, like <laughs> terrible radio opera. And I was like, man, these things have like 300,000 views on YouTube each because everyone wants an audio Bible, but this is the worst. I was like, surely there has to be a better audio Bible. And then we just started talking and so it kind of, it's just a passion project basically. And, and it's, we wish we were further than we are, but the first one was, so we're doing the Book of Psalms. If you don't know what this is, we we had we have one of the videos playing in the pre-service video, um, but it's the the first volume is Psalms one through forty one, and we hired amazing um, talent to do uh, the recordings. Like you know, it's it's we weren't looking for someone with a good heart but no history or talent, so we got some really great actors to voice uh, both male and female uh, to voice these psalms. We wanted it to feel like you were hearing David 
pray it for the first time. So it was more like, we want you to experience this, not theologically primarily, but emotionally and poetically. And so Caleb is obviously, he's the, you know, the tall drink of water who's amazing. Co-reckless <laughs> <laughs> co, co, co love author and whatnot. So he's obviously incredibly talented. We go, our parents went to college together, so we've got a long history together. Um, played music together, did lots of projects together. So it was a natural fit for us. We love collaborating, and we're still trying to chip away to do all the psalms. Um, but the idea is to make, you know, something that is more than just tolerable <laughs> to engage with the word, and, and hopefully it's a blessing to people who, who are able to engage with it. Um, and we made it into videos, too. So, you know, I kind of directed the actors, and we worked together with a little bit of music. Music was mostly him. Um, I did a lot of the editing and then all the video and everything like that. So it's, it's a fun project. It's very time consuming. It's like making a feature film. It's an hour and a half long. It took a really long time to get done. And uh, there's more to go. So that's that. It's on Spotify, Apple, or iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube, all that stuff. So you can stream it or whatever. Can you just walk through kind of the creative process working with Lee and the other teaching pastors and like how that all, for, well, for a Sunday, for like a yeah. weekend experience, I guess. Yeah, um, I would love to have the team jump because we all kind of play different roles in that. Um, you know, with Lee in particular, it's, you know, he'll, he, he's moving into a season where he's not going to be doing as many series and more one-offs um, just because he feels like that's where he's at right now. But for the Rollins and, or for the, uh, for, the, for the sermons, there's a few components. We have graphics, we have Rollins, we have all these, you know, the website and all that stuff. So why don't we just go down the line and everyone just kind of talk about like what are some of the different roles you've played and whether it's helping create uh, the video roll-ins or the, uh, which if you're wondering what those are, we've got them on the website and stuff. We have a creative media page on the website. You can check out all of these different things. Um, graphics, even just, Ashley, I'd love to hear about how just like managing all these things moving at once. So and maybe like the timeline as well. Like so yeah. how many weeks out? How many weeks out are you doing this? How many weeks out are you doing that? I think you mean days and hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, ultimately, in our in my like perfect world, I try to start like bugging and poking about it and seeing if there's anything stirring. Um, usually, going through Joel, but he'll use a prompting him to go talk to Pastor Lee. About three months would be like preferred. Honestly, it usually looks more like three or four weeks, I feel like, is probably, okay. like, like, for a series. Like, for real, like, that's, like, a way ahead of the game yeah. kind of thing. Um, for one-offs, it will be, like, the week of. Um, but usually, Joel handles a lot of, like, getting the, like, creative vision and understanding of what he's wanting, and he'll usually come back and bounce it off, um, either Anna or Jake, and kind of work with them to try and get a good feel for where we're going. Yeah, um, so once it comes to myself or Jake, sometimes both of us, um, Jake, myself, and Joel will usually sit down together and talk through what Pastor Lee has, has kind of presented as his vision for, because he's really visual and he loves to be involved, which we love, and he has really specific things that he wants sometimes. Um, and then we kind of brainstorm together for a while. We have like a sit-down sort of creative chit-chat session where we talk, you know, colors and, you know, do we want to do a hand type or do we want to do a font or something like that and we just throw out different ideas and it's just kind of a, a we should go for it, all, all three of us together, sometimes it's me and Jake. Um, or it's me just like constantly texting or messaging to them, which is I like, like all hours of the day and night. Because Sending us cool. direct Instagram short messages. Text. Yeah. Short texts. I, I don't think I've ever actually texted, I'm just talking to my phone so everyone gets like a thesis from me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of where it's the the brainstorming starts, and that's usually you know like one work day we'll we'll set aside maybe an hour or something like that in our schedule to talk about you know where we want how we want to move forward what which idea is best we you know that type of thing we find inspiration on the internet stuff like that um, and then either myself or Jake will um, design the art to go along with it so like the branding for the sermon series or the one off. Um, which usually means uh, a static sermon slide, and then that gets translated into any roll-in that Pastor Joel does for uh, the sermon series. And, and sometimes graphics drive the whole thing. So I, uh, uh, Pastor, he's come up with a book called Flourish. He did a series called Flourish last year. And the artwork was like the, Anna did a graphic, 
it was really cool using like old like floral patterns and block text. It was like we needed to feel like a full range of feminine and masculine and like poppy but cool and serious and da 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 da. So she came up with that look, and then I went off that and made the video rolling and stuff like that. And, and but other times I'm, I make the thing. I'm like, here you guys go. This is what it is. Make graphics for it. So it's really there's not like a one size fits all sort of thing. It's what's the strongest idea, and we use that kind of as the. True North. <laughs> See what there? <laughs> that one's free. <laughs> Be here all week. Um, Elena, maybe you don't have anything to say about this, but Elena's first week, like, I mean, you were like oh, right out of the gate. Yeah. I'm like, hey, we're going to do this rolling. Here's the concept. Here's the camera. Go get the shots I want. And then she's like, oh, okay. I was like, I, <laughs> like I first day, like, hi, I'm Elena. Yeah. I work here now. No, 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 we'll talk about that later. Go. How was that for you? As a, You're comfortable now in a lot of ways, but first time right out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, it was really nice to just jump in because I had never worked in ministry before. I never envisioned myself working in ministry ever. I had just left a job that I was convinced I'd be at for a million years. And then Very we did this. Yeah, it was really great. Um, but... But yeah, so it was a camera I'd never used before with people I'd never met before. And so we just went out for a full day and shot a bunch of stuff. We just had this old... It was the like, Tuned In series. Tuned I don't know series. if anyone is familiar with that, but it's like an old radio from... Yeah. It was oh. Jane, Lee and Jane's, it was her, her dad's radio from the 50s. And I was all about hearing the voice of God. So I had them set up all over town and they went to all these different locations and they got them amazing stuff. Yeah. So I thought it was really cool because in the it was the first role in that Radiant had done in like since you got there that was actual film and well not literal film but digital film and footage and stuff instead of just graphics or working in after effects or in photoshop or something so i thought that was really cool because like adding a videographer and then saying all right we're actually going to use you now instead of just like having one added and it really like helped the team kind of merge and realize how like footage can really supplement what they were doing in the scrollings and everything yeah. and that's a great example of how expanding the team helped because I was the only video person. It was like I was spinning 8,000 plates all the time. So like a lot of the stuff I was like, I just need to make this at my computer. I don't have time to go out and shoot anything. And so by the time she came, I think it was like, oh, like we can actually do things <laughs> that don't rely on like the bottleneck of one person. So anyway, I don't know if that totally helps, but it's curious. Um, I just recently stepped into the creative director role at my church. And um, I just one thing that I'm finding kind of difficult is like clearly we are more um, graphically driven and everything, having a social media presence and all that. Um, but there are so many other elements to creative and I didn't know how, if that has anything to do with you or how do, how do you um, communicate like things with environment? How do you, you know, those sort of creative things. How do you, how do you include those people into yeah. it without letting them think like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not a graphic designer or I'm not a videographer or anything like that. How do you inspire them to um, to still be in it? Like, you know, when you don't necessarily have anything for them. So uh, I just want to make sure I'm understanding your question correctly. So like, if you know that the core value or mechanism of creativity is, let's just say graphic design, mm -hmm. Are you saying, like, how do you include everyone else who maybe occupies other spaces, but really that still prioritizes this? Yeah. Is that an accurate way to say it? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to, I like, for, I feel like I have to encompass everything, but I really think, like, the main focus should be graphically. But I don't, I just have a heart for people, and I don't want anybody to ever feel like they're left out because they can't do this. Sure. So yeah, that's a dilemma as a leader. It's not really a problem, it's a dilemma because problems you can solve and dilemmas are usually paradoxes that you can't really truly resolve. You have to find a way for them to coexist. I think the least loving thing you can do is to not focus on what you can be best at and ex and, and that therefore you're punishing your entire, not punishing is a strong word, but you're stopping everyone else in the church that you're serving from experiencing the best thing you have to offer because you're trying to include other people. So what's the win? Define the win. If the win is involving people, involve people, because then the result is less important than that. But if the result of A, B, and C is the win, and this doesn't support that, then don't do it, because it's not really loving. You, you, you don't want to hurt anyone, but also, like, you know what? Like, people get hurt about stuff, and it's not your responsibility to make them respond a certain way. If it's not a priority of your church, the least loving thing to do is prioritize it. So does that make sense? I would say, what, what would you guys say? I mean, we, we, we constantly feel that dilemma between mm -hmm. 
What do we do? What's our priority? How do you include people? When, do, when shouldn't you? When can you just do it better without that? Does that make sense? What do you guys think? I, I totally agree. And, you know, it's, it kind of comes back to, like, what is ministry? Like, is putting someone's painting that they painted up on the wall, like, does that help include them as a church? Or is there another expression that they can do that's outside of, like, the official congregation? Um, that's what I always go back to. I don't feel like, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have anything to chime in on that with? Does that make sense? Is that, is that helpful? Yeah. Um, I I'm not saying I, don't include people. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> um, and I feel like I was, like, I need to kind of focus more on, like, our graphic designers, our social media people, and Focus on the thing that you can do best, because that will attract more people that you want to attract. I I do think you can, like there are ways, like finding, you know, if you do have a painter, like is there a way that you could incorporate that into social media? Um, You know, probably. Um, Probably not worth spending, you know, 30% of your time on, or 50% of your time, but you know, maybe there's some ways to like weave them back into the main narrative that you're forming. And I, I think time is the real key. You should, I, I try to live by the 60-40 rule. 60% of focused time block work where I'm doing the most valuable work I can do. 40% tasks, writing copy, email, admin, base camp, even though she will tell you I'm not very good at that. Um, you know, the stuff that you've got to do in order to make the thing move. Unless you're like, I mean, Ashley, for instance, is a project manager. So the stuff that are tasks for me is like, her job. So it's different for her than it is for me, but for me, if I'm not spending the majority of my time doing the thing that will move us forward that only I can do, then I'm not really serving. So maybe what you can do is go, okay, I'm going to look at including people as a task and not a time block for me to do my best creative work. So I can budget this much time. You will spend whatever you budget. If you don't budget anything, you're going to spend everything. So say, I can spend an hour a week involving people. What is that? What's the best way to use that hour? Instead of getting the person to maybe, I'm not, I'm not dissing this, I'm just saying maybe the best way to spend that hour is not to find a way to get their artwork in, in the lobby. Maybe the best way is to like show up with a cell phone and go, hey, we're going to do an Instagram story. We want you to just tell us your story. We're going to go live. We're going to stream and we're going to save it. And it's low production, low effort, and it makes them feel valued. And you go, hey, we value the arts and the creatives. We don't need to force it into a ministry model on a weekend for it to be a value here. Does that make sense? Or even just developing a relationship with that person yeah. until the prime time, you know, comes yeah. when you do need a painting. Like having maybe having coffee mm-hmm. once a month is valuable now mm-hmm. that will lead to something better in the future. Yeah. Anyone else got anything to add to that or we can move on? You good? That's <laughs> fine. Okay. What's up, though? <laughs> all right, so I'm a worship arts director at my church, which means not only do I handle all the music stuff, but I handle all the creative stuff. So, uh, <laughs> Graphic design and video and socials, head up that and website, yeah, everything. So as far as like budgeting time and that type of idea, what should be like the biggest priorities? Because there's like, what's your church's biggest priority? Yeah. Do you know what the three things are the most important on a weekend for you guys? I'm, I'm literally asking. This is not a loaded question. Um, I mean, we want to see first time guests. We want to see so people. connection. Yeah, connection, but see people, you know, grow in the faith, right? Disciples and uh, see so discipleship. I guess you can say open and out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the best way to prioritize your time are to focus on the kinds of projects that make those things bigger wins. So if your biggest priority is connection, maybe for you, maybe that means a simple talking head video about your senior pastor talking about why connection and discipleship is so important and how people can plug in. Or maybe it's a graphic because maybe you know, that is a priority, but we make it pretty easy. The guys over at Guest Central, they can get people plugged in really easily and it's conversational and relational. So maybe the priority is communication on the weekend of how to find the guys at the connection place. So maybe it's on our screens doing a, you know, some of the ways we try to do it, you know, there's slides in the lobby, there's a 15 minute countdown video that's like our movie previews that everything, it's always changing, events, calendar, this, that, everything. So you got to find out ways that you can execute with it. You've, you've got a lot of plates spinning and some of them aren't going to stay up there. They're going to fall and break. But what, like, you, you, if you don't establish a priority, there will never be one. Yeah. So you have to establish what is the most important thing that moves us forward and then prioritize. Because there, it's a myth that there is a such thing as priorities. It's not a word that entered the English vernacular until like 150 years ago. 
So you can only have one priority and everything else is secondary or tertiary. So that would be my advice and that'll make you sane. And, 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 if, and one thing that I did early on when I first got here, it was like that. I had, to, I had so much to do and I didn't have a big team. The team was smaller than this and it wasn't even these people. So like, it, it was clearly like up in the air. We didn't know where things were gonna land in a million ways. And I grabbed Pastor Lee and I said, here are the 15 things that we have going on. I need you to put these in order for me and I need you to then agree to the time blocks that I can put my team into these. Make it his idea. If you make it your pastor's idea, then you don't have to get off the hook for anything. Instead of they go, hey, man, this isn't working. We gotta do more of this. And then you go, okay, but then tell me where you want me to put the time there or there, you know? Like, there's a way for you to absolve yourself of an unfair burden of making decisions for the leader well, while also not absolving yourself of the responsibility of participating in that. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's up, Don? Hey. <laughs> um, in my experience, uh, some of which I've added to, some of which I've received and was part of, uh, in the creative world, uh, one of the easy things to go out the window, especially in times of pressure, is a, a culture of honor. Um, when there's disappointment, there's unmet needs, there's disagreement, there is legitimate uh, clashing of expectations and time and you know, people coming in going, I hate that, I love that, and why don't you do that more? So, and you have that internally with your team here, everyone sees things differently. No, we all agree. You, 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 you have that with Pastor Lee, and I'm sure there's moments that you guys disagree. Um, and uh, as a pastor myself, uh, coming from the creative world, but now driving in a different way, I just wonder if you guys could talk about uh, <coughs> creating, maintaining a culture of honor while still uh, celebrating you guys' differences. Yeah, I'd love to hear everyone on this. So, Ashley, why don't you start it off? Because all of us, I'm really interested to hear your answers, guys. How do you, how do you relate to those you disagree with? Uh, no. I, I would love to, for real, because everyone's going to have a different perspective because it touches all of us differently. Yeah. I feel yeah. like um, it's something that Joel does really well. Um, I feel like it's being able to be open and honest. Like, I feel like for me, like, I can express, like, th these are my opinions. This is my view on it. Because it's I, so much of what we do is art, and it's subjective. Like, really. It is totally up to the person how they interpret it. Um, so as long as I feel like I can express clearly in an honoring way and, like, keep my heart in check, I have gotten to the point now where I'm like, I'm okay. Like, I've expressed what I think. If you want to go in a different direction, that's that's great. Uh, I really, truly feel like it puts you in a spot. You can get your heart to that spot of, like, okay, I can let it go. Yeah. You, you can go home and sleep and enjoy your family. Mm -hmm. Really, it's it's freeing for me to be able to just be like, okay, that's your decision. That's I, good. I'm okay with it. I, I would agree with that. I, it's very difficult as an artist to disconnect yourself from the heart of what's happening, um, which sometimes is a gift. You know, you put your whole heart into something and people can see that and people appreciate that. But um, I know it's definitely a lesson that I've had to learn over the years is to, to know when, you know, this, the best idea is going to win. And it's really not a personal thing. It's all about honoring each other in the collaboration. Um, and the best idea really will win out. Um, so I think another thing that I've practiced as well is just really, really being um, aware of when I am expressing my opinion and it's valid and when I'm just complaining and when yeah. I'm taking it personally. Like I really try and practice not complaining <laughs> about you know the minutia or whether things are stressful or whether I disagree with this person or that person, even if it's outside of this department. Mm -hmm. Um, I I feel like it's it's a practice that and the the word you use Jerry is great honor is a great word to just like put on a post it note and stick to your computer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think just practicing a lack of complaining or you know uplifting speech and I like Ashley said uh, Joel's really created a culture of of uh, openness and um, I think that's super, super important to be able to be vulnerable, not just about the stuff that is work-related, but about, I mean, even it, even your personal life on your team, you can't, um, you can't come into work and not feel like you it's can talk about what yeah. just happened, you know, at home or something like that. So it really is like a family kind of culture, which really perpetuates honor. 
Yeah, I think something else that our uh, team kind of does unknowingly is that we all really respect everyone's process of what, the art they create and how they make it. And so, like, even though, like, Joel and I are the only people that film, and even though, like, Anna's doing all the print and no one else is really doing a lot of the print, even though Jake helps with stuff too, but he just wants the graphics, um, we all, like, know the work that goes into it, and we understand how hard they're working. Yeah. We all sit in the same room together, so we're watching everyone, like, slave over things, and everything and so when when someone comes up to someone else and says I don't like that or obviously in a nicer way um, it's not just like that's <laughs> yeah that's so um, it never feels like that sucks you should start over you're it never feels like that it always, it's, I don't know it's just that since we all know the work that goes into something because we're all like sitting in the same room or we talk about our process then it's harder for us to be mean about things that we see because when you know how much work goes into it you don't want to Say that's up. You are yeah. It's never arbitrary. I feel like we, it's we all have like an informed sort of feedback that we give each other. Yep. Or at least we try to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say for me, um, and even being like kind of just coming into this stuff, like I never thought I was gonna do art or graphic design or anything like that. Um, so that whole process of learning how to, I I guess it's just really important to not be offendable is that's a huge thing. Because a lot of that stuff and the offense and that kind of crap that kind of bubbles up, it starts with you. I mean, a lot of that, like, knowing that if I create something and I bring it to Joel or I bring it to Honor or anybody else, I'm going in knowing that, like, I can trust my team and I can trust my leadership. And I'm also not going to be offended, kind of what they were saying about um, if they don't like an idea. Because art is so personal and you, you get into that kind of mindset of, like, this is my passion, like, eh, like, get over yourself, like, honestly, like, if, if I know the why of what I'm doing, what I'm doing, it's not to create cool art, it's not to be cool, it's not to do anything like that. Those I'm are using... important, though, Jake. <laughs> Those are important. Want to make cool art. Of course that. It's a value for me. Yeah. For sure. But it, my goal isn't to be, like, this cool dude that makes cool stuff and people look at it. It's I'm, I'm wanting to create an element that the Lord can use to prophesy his heart into people. And so if I'm doing that well, then if my art kind of sucks the first round and everyone else sees it, I'm going to trust my leadership around me and also not be offended because someone else is seeing something that I'm not. Um, and so I think a lot of that kind of starts with you. And that culture of honor thing uh, that Anna was saying, like the Lord's really been convicting me on that lately, um, is because, like, man, even, like, the little things, like, you're throwing seeds into soil that is really, really ready to start producing fruit really quickly, especially in a team like this. And so even just like the little comments and those things, like you actually carry that in with you into the workplace. And so if I know that someone else has an opinion about a leader or anything else, I'm going to be filtering that through my head as well. Mm -hmm. And so being really careful about like, okay, I have trust with this person, but this person has an issue with this leader. And so now that's my filter now. Mm -hmm. And so if you were talking about someone else, that's my new filter. It's not anything that I experience with another leader, but you are, you're kind of creating that trust and when you actually have each other's backs and you actually have that kind of accountability of, man, like, we are all in the same thing. Yeah, we piss each other off sometimes, and that's just a part of it, being a family. I'm what you're talking about, Jim. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but that culture of honor is huge, you know? Um, and it's okay to be upset. Like, I mean, yeah. we've all had issues and whatever, but we get through it. But it's like, man, like, our, our why is really a lot more important than having that kind of vulnerable don't hate my art, like, <laughs> just get over it. <laughs> a really nice way to cushion against some of that, like, people are still people and they have feelings, um, so going out of your way to, like, celebrate the wins, celebrate yeah, the things that you really sure. do like, at times where, you know, you're not, like, setting them up to be like, hey, you did this really good, but you sucked at this. Like, <laughs> really, when they did a good job, just tell them they did a really good job and yeah. and let them feel, like, you, you honoring them is going to be yeah. a really good, like, back and forth relationship. That's, that's, yeah. I yeah. And I, Cause everybody wants that. You want to. Yeah. And on top of celebrating wins, celebrating failure is something that Joel really fosters in our group. Like, when we were first starting... I would ask so many questions, I'd be like, I don't know exactly what you want, or what's the vibe, what's the, the specificness is? He's like, I don't care, go fail, and then you'll make something better <laughs> next time, which is awesome and great. Yeah, and sure. so, like, and just That's pointing cool. out, hey, you failed at this, but we then you actually... We don't publish the failures, we just start <laughs> yeah. over until we get it right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll it'll just be like seeing something tiny from a failure in this huge success, like whether it's one a font that we hated in this thing, is actually, wow, incredible in this other thing. So celebrating what comes yeah. out of failure for future That's awesome. Think of, uh, the one of the things that's really important to me is vulnerability. They, they kind of touched on that. Vulnerability is not 
immature processing or unbridled expression of emotion. It's, um, you know, it's authenticity. I, I, a lot of times it's easy to give like the right leadership answer. But like sometimes like it's really important for like, for me to be able to express like I'm not a robot who's here to like check off the boxes of my job description. I'm not. I'm not. Your, I'm not primarily your direct report, although I am. Like, like it, it's it's so much bigger than that. And so I think one of the things that allows for, like, and I don't do this in a self-deprecating way, but like they let me see me hate my own ideas and start over. Like, you know, success is failing with style. Like you kind of just do things over and over until you find it. And, and, I, and you know, to one of your points that you asked was like, kind of how do you, when you disagree with Pastor Lee or da 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 da, I don't ever really feel like it, the, the Y and the big, the capital W wins, we are so in sync on that how we get there is far less important than getting there. And there have been times where I have deferred to things and then I go, you know, I'm gonna make this the best thing I can, even if I'm not getting it right now. There's times when I bring an idea and he loves it and we're going for it and then I change my mind because it sucks and we weren't right. But I think one of the things, most, one of the most graceful ways you can redirect um, creative energy and like even a collaborative ideation process is instead of saying no and here's why I don't like it, you can go, yeah, okay, yeah, I, get, I, I see that. What if we tried this? Like not, hey, let's try this. Like what if, like just go with me for a minute. This may be a terrible idea, but what if? And when you actually allow yourself to spit out terrible ideas, because like 99 out of 100 are not good, like ideas are cheap, you know? It's like, I can come up with a thousand ideas for things right now, one of them might be good, but we share bad ideas, and that's, and that's part of it. And I think it, it even reinforces trust that you're like, okay, they are looking at this from a million angles. Like, it's not, we're not being rigid in our approach. Like, I'm not afraid to throw it all away and start over, but ultimately at the end of the day, like I'll just take you know, one simple small example, like a sermon roll-in is something, I mean, it's, they're so fun to make. It's like this little 30 second bumper that's like, it can either be super vibey or like hyped up or whatever. But I approach it every time going like, they, we just got done with video announcements and they took offering. And so people have transitioned from encountering the Lord in worship to now maybe the distraction and da, 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 da. I want to arrest their attention so that there is tilled soil for Lee when he gets up there. And so that's the win, not him liking the roll in. And there is the, the, the best example of this was the Flourish series that we did. It, it's, it, I think it's kind of become everyone's like favorite it's roll in. It's the best one. <laughs> it's good, it's good. But the first one I did, I was like, Ashley, what do you think about this? And she was like, it's like, you're not talking. This is not good. <laughs> like, it was bad. I just, I was hitting writer's block. I spent so much time. It was wasted time. And then I was like, screw it. Oh, fine, I'll do the thing that I know is going to take longer. And it ended up crushing, but it took her being honest with me. And it took me displaying vulnerability with them in other circumstances for that to be a trusted yeah. feedback system. I value their critique as much as they hopefully value mine. <laughs> I mean, they don't really get to choose whether or not I give it, I guess. But we have, but critique is something, every, in every one of these interviews that, every, that we ever did, I'm pretty sure I brought up how much I value honest, open, vulnerable feedback on work and on team chemistry, because, it, you know, people get their feelings hurt way too, like, man, I remember when I was a senior in high school and I was going to, like, portfolio days at, you know, art colleges, and, like, you literally go, I'm going to go, I don't know, I'm going to spend a whole day here, wait in line forever like I'm at Disney so you can tell me what's not good about my work so that I can get better. So to me, critique was a really valuable process. And it's something that a lot of people, it's like, oh, this is my art. This is my worship. You can't critique that. And I'm like, I'm not critiquing your heart, but you got to get better. <laughs> like, you know, you want to Please just tell me the person who changed the world by being sincere and not masterful. Like, it just doesn't happen very often. And so the road to mastery is paved with critique. And that's, that can be a really actually strengthening process. And when you, and when you open yourself up to it. And then you also are, because one of the things that's as, as hard as receiving is sometimes it's really hard to give it because it's like, I love you. I don't want to tell you that I think this sucks. And you don't, I don't ever say, oh, this sucks. Like, that's so harsh. Like, it's not like you're on Facebook making a comment. You're never going to see the person. So, you know, you, it, it's, it's more of like, you know, redirecting and regarding, hey, this isn't working for me. And here's why. And the here's why is really important. Yeah. When I say, Jake, we, we have conversations all the time. Like, yeah, that's not working for me. Here's why. And then it's like, all right, you know what? I like this, but I understand why you don't, so yeah. let's find a win. 
And the win is the impact of that person during that sermon or during that video that we're going to send out, <coughs> blah, 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 whatever it is. You know? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Hopefully that's helpful. Who else? Um, I have one. I kind of have two, but they go hand in hand. Um, what is your percentage? If you can put a percentage, what is the percentage of your workload that you guys may take? For example, events, sermon series, ministry, things like handouts from the nursery, or yes. stuff like that. What is your <laughs> what is your what is your workload percentage? And the reason I'm asking is, if you have, I come from a church where we're very event driven. Very, every ministry has event, 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 and how you avoid burnout. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey, Ash- Ashley is the Ashley is the point guard. She receives all the requests. I'll throw out one sentence and then I'll let her take it. But I think we 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 allocate percentage and priority based on us having really good communication up the line of what the pro- what, what the capital P priorities are. And so I'll let Ashley answer maybe how she kind of process because one of the things that she does amazingly is it's not just like, she's not the first line of approval or denial, even though she wields the power in that button. Uh, she knows when people are actually asking for the wrong thing. And so she'll be intuitive and go, hey, we know where we're going. We know where we're going as we know the priority right now. Pastor Rick, say hi. That's Rick, he, he's, he's, he's kind of our, he's, a, he's everything. He's like our CEO, as it were, in a lot of ways. And sense of like, yeah. he just helps us keep these things running. He works really close with Pastor Lee, and, and so we know we can go to him and go, hey, what's the priority? How does this, that is. so we work really closely up the line, but then Ashley, what does it look like once we're talking to Pastor Rick, Pastor Lee, or the client, whoever the department is, once we have all the information, how do you feel that process is for you uh, in terms of understanding the scope of the project? Is it the right scope? Is this, what, how much time? Who should be working on this? Blah, blah, blah. And I know we work together on some of that, but kind of describe it from your perspective. Um. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is figuring out like what's the priority for the organization and starting there um, and starting with the big rocks. So I kind of look at our whole team's schedule kind of linearly. Like if I know, you know, we have two conferences coming up this year, we have Easter weekend and we have Christmas, and those are like our, our big four like amazing things. I'm going to take the whole year and like put big old rocks in, and that's what I want like the majority of the team's time planning and chunking out. As we, as we process through. And then as smaller stuff comes in, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, is this, you know, is this handout for the kids that they need to you know, communicate this to parents? Like, is this the best way? Like, I need to make sure that I have a really good understanding of what they're actually trying to do. Because they, you know, everybody, I don't know, 50, 60 people on staff, you know, every person has the ability to submit a request to us saying, you know, I want this postcard made, or I want this graphic made. It's, uh, I take it upon myself to like look at it and really get a clear understanding. Like, what are you actually trying to do? Is a postcard? Does that make the most sense? Like, could we instead of, you know, printing a postcard and giving it to every person in the church, could we uh, send an email to these ten people that this information actually has to go to? And then in that sh- <laughs> <laughs> for real, y'all. <laughs> Um, you know, and then if, if that's the case, if we need to send out an email, does it need to be like a flashy billboard, have like videos embedded and all this crazy stuff? Or could the department head, uh, could they send that out? Could the kids department pastor send that out to those 10 people and have it be relational and sure. have it be a win there instead of having to take up time writing copy for it and making graphics for it and embedding things and um, so I try to go down that list and think, like, what's going to be the win for that department's thing and for my team? Um, and it's very possible to fatigue your entire community. Like, we have, I don't know what, 10, 12 lines of communication that we use regularly, maybe more, yeah. when you include all the different social media platforms and email and the screens and the foyer and blah, blah, you know, drop cards, all these things. Not everything goes to all 10 or 12. Like, right. it's like, you know what, like, we could make a video, we're good at making videos. We got some good videos up in here. If everything was a video, no one would pay attention to videos. Right. <laughs> like, if everything was a drop card, you're gonna come every Sunday and walk away with a freaking novel? Like, <laughs> it's not, no one's gonna read them. You know, so we're really intentional about wh- what is the best fit, and then that helps drive the prioritization of time, and then also you have to look on return on investment. There's a lot of things that we would like to have, but what's the return on investment? If it really is as simple as 
like like she said, like she's a generic example. These ten people need to know, and maybe because maybe it's ten community group leaders, and there's a big community group event. But really, like, does everyone in the church need to know, or just these ten community groups that are going to do the cleanup at the school know? And like, what's the most effective way? Because what's the win? The win is getting these ten groups there. All right, well, let's communicate the most effective way. Because sometimes communication it should be relational and not production. You know. And I think that if you get those things really tight and prioritized, then you'll, like, over time, I think there's been a couple times where we've had to, like, just say, hey, we need, the, we need a video for this. And we've said no to a lot of stuff, not because we don't want to make a video. We make a lot of videos. But we go, like, you know what? Like, you're not going to get the result you want. So let us show you how we think we can get the best result and the best turnout. And there have been times where people have been nervous. Like, we're not promoting this early enough. I'm like, two weeks is plenty. Trust me. And the thing, we're past capacity. Like, and now the next time around... Okay, so at, sometimes going, and it takes a little bit of risk, but asking for some trust of like, you've entrusted this to me. Now you need to either trust me to win for you or trust me to fail and learn and do it better next time. And, that, and that's just healthy organization. And, and not every organization is healthy, and we all know that. I've been in really unhealthy organizations and it's not fun. And I left, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it, it doesn't always work everywhere, but if you can be an agent of change by promoting those kinds of dialogues and things, then you're going to find yourself ahead of it, anticipating things instead of reacting to them. Does that help? It does. does. It does. Um, and where I'm from, like, the, the heart of the church, no problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just we have themes that come in, and it's our creative director of all the million things that this person has to do, she now has to set every task, and she takes it upon herself, yes, they knew this, knowing knew that. Our project manager literally takes an email and puts it into a software for tasks. And that's all she does, and to hear that it's you that get to say yes or no would relieve our creative director to direct our email. Yeah, <laughs> the most ultimate power. Like, I make, I make rational decisions. They come to me. I make decisions based on, like, you know, what I feel, you know, I can I can make and I can feel confident in. And then if I have a question, like, we take it to, I'll take it to Joel, and then we'll take it to our campus pastors sure. and, like, an operations meeting every week. And we're, it's kind of a process. Yeah, we, we have, it's a very collaborative process. And, and one of the things that is really important, and, and it's a value here, is that trust is given and mistrust is earned. So, if you're on my team, you're here because I trust you. And so Ashley, she knows I trust her. But she's also very intelligent, and she knows she's not stupid enough to want to make all the decisions. <laughs> so, you know, so, so she, the, the, when, when she's making decisions on behalf of our department, I know and trust that she's very confident that it's actually in the best interest of that department or that event or that whatever. But she knows there's a threshold at which you know, like, you know what, we really need input because the implications of this decision, and that's why her systematic mind is so helpful to us because she knows where implications are made in decisions. And so we always, we have an open dialogue of a lot of things and we have meetings with our campus pastors. Like there, there's these tiers of decision making and we always know where, which decisions need to get made where. And there's times when it's a team effort and we speak into it. And there's times where we just go, you know what? What do you guys want to do? Because we don't want to make the decision. Because if we make the decision, we've got to own the results. I want you to just tell me what you want here. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. And I think, too, if your creative director is, a, is truly a creative director, then you don't want them bogged down with administration. Like, it, it, what's the one thing they can do better than anyone? That's, that should be why they're there. Yeah. And if they're doing some, it's not that they're doing someone else's job, but it's like, if, if your church will have to make the decision, we either want a creative administrator or a creative director, if, we, if you can't have both, and if you really want them to be creative, but you, oh man, then you really have to define priorities. Like, what's really important? What can we live with and what can't we live without? You know, like, and so some of that time, it's like we have to self prune. That's something that over the last two years, we're still a process here. It's so easy to do stuff. It was a win, let's go bigger and better. And one of the smartest things you can do to carry forward innovation is to self-limit. Self-imposed artificial limitations are the soil that innovation grows in. It absolutely is. You know, Pixar is a phenomenal example. It's like they're going to roll their eyes and I tell the story all the time. But Pixar is a phenomenal example because it wasn't always this way, but now it is. They're like, you know, all the money in the world, probably, right? It's like, it's like there is no limit. They're owned by Disney and there's no limit. But every project they have... They have self-imposed limitations on their production budget. 
So what they, they, how they measure that is a person week. So what's the amount of work one person can do in a week, and they've got popsicle sticks that represent every person week. And they have this whole grid that they create, and they, the producers and directors, they put all the popsicle sticks and how much time are we going to spend on these things. And if something goes wrong and they need to fix something, or if they want to change an idea or a concept, oh, we really need to change the hair in this thing, which hair in computer animation is like insane, right? They're like, great, you want to do that? Awesome. Where are we pulling the popsicle sticks from? And it's, it's like, because we're not going to spend more time on this. We've got 18,000 person weeks, because they got no few thousand people working for, we got this minute, we're not, here's the deadline, we are not coming in over budget or late. So where's it gonna come from? And, and that's discipline, and that's actually really good stewardship. Right. Really good stewardship is knowing when to limit yourself, and it really frees you up. Because it's not like, we're not not doing things because we can't, we're being strategic. It really helps you define your why, you know? I think we do, we're doing that pretty well. We got a long way to go. It's a process. It's a direction. It's not like we didn't get there overnight by any means, and we're not there yet. But that's kind of. Would you all agree with that? I hope you do. That is said. I feel like that's where, like, starting with your big rocks, those non-negotiables. Like, we're doing this. Like, we're having service every weekend. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a non-negotiable. You know, we're we're having this conference. People paid for it. We have to have it. That in focusing on that stuff and planning that out first, then you can you you have a better idea of, of what your limitations are. Because then you can go into you know, the three months ahead of time knowing like, I have to devote 20 hours a week of this for each of my team members or it's not gonna happen. Sure. So if we wanna do, you know, have, make videos for 40 hours a week, either everybody's working crazy overtime or it just isn't even realistic. Sure. So, it's Who else? So how would you suggest motivating a creative team based on volunteers. Why are they there? <laughs> Motivation is based on why. So paid or not, you know, if, if they're there because they're God's gift to you, it's poison and it's not gonna help you. And a lot of people, not, I'm not gonna try, we are heavily reliant on volunteers at Radiant Church, like every other church out there. Like the kids ministry ain't gonna happen. The youth ministry ain't gonna happen. Connection and all these things are gonna happen. But I think what you want to do is is really, if, if volunteers are, if they, this is our model, we are going to do this with volunteers, then having the relationship strong and communication strong is really important. But then I think if, if you're trying to drive results, you, if you're trying to motivate them, you have to tap into like why they're there and what their motivation is. And that way, you go, man, this person is way more skilled than that person, but this person wants control, and they're critical, and they're not that nice, and they do good work, but man, it stresses us out. You should probably serve in first impressions, you know, or something. Maybe not, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really bad. But, um, but, so it really is about, like, understanding them, and then, and then you can make intelligent decisions, because you got to think of, like, if, if you're in a, if you're coordinating them, you're, it, it is a form of a pastoral role. It's not always fun. Like sometimes you've got to like help people grow. And so motivation is different than like excellence, right? So like motivating volunteers, if they're not motivated to be, if they volunteer and they're showing up and they're unmotivated, then it's probably a culture thing that you've got to go, hey, where are we missing it? That we've got people signing up. Are they just obligated and da, 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 da? Or are we selling them, are we selling this thing the wrong way? Like, are we... Here's what I'm imagining I'm saying, but maybe they're hearing it this way. So how can we reframe this to tap into why they're here? And I think the big capital W wins. Like, what is your church's priority this year? We want to save souls. All right, team, we are trying to save souls. How do we get people to react to this graphic? And they go, I'm coming to that thing. Yeah. Their soul is the priority. That's the win. Not, hey, show up and complete it on time. Because they'll show up and complete it on time if they care about the cause. Mm -hmm. So that would be my knee-jerk reaction. And I think even coming from, because I, in a way, was a volunteer. I started as an intern. An <clears throat> unpaid intern. Yeah. And like I all church mine. internships. <laughs> and he, something that Joel does so well is that vision casting. Like, he <clears throat> literally convinced me to be a graphic designer. Like, I, I had just, I had never opened Illustrator. I didn't know how to do a new project, anything. I was, like, music person. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And he's like, hey, you draw, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, I want you to intern. And I hated it at first. So I quit and I did it again. And so, but, but what he did so well was saying, hey, like this is something that I see that the Lord's doing in you. Um, I obviously I'm not paying you. I don't have all of this, but here's what I see. And here's the future of what Radiant's going to. And here's why this is important. And here's why I feel like you have a part in this. 
Um, and so having that for me, it wasn't really at the end of the day for a paycheck, which money is nice and I wanted it, but <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 at the same time, like it was, it was like, man, okay, how do I, it's that same stuff with like, man, like let's make something that people are gonna actually encounter the heart of, heart of the Father with. And so that value system for me made it so much more important than just showing up and making a graphic or making stuff for kids ministry or whatever. Because that's not like the height of your career, like making a diaper bag card thing. Like, <laughs> that's not like, I really want to do this, please. But like, it's, it's a thing of like, man, like when people walk in, even for True North, like even when people are walking in and they're seeing all the little tiny details and it's a bunch of creatives and they're seeing those like little things that we do really well with excellence. Everything's on brand. Um, there's that value system that's there, and it made me want it to. It tells do you that it we more. care. Yeah. That's the thing. Motivate a lot of people. They, like, Why do you need this to be so excellent? Isn't this good enough? And good enough is like it's just the enemy of excellence, right? Like there's a lot of things that are good enough, but good enough for what? Like what does that even mean? What does that mean? Who is this good enough for? People who don't care? <laughs> because if we want people to be invested in care, then it's got to be good enough for for that. And and so I think one of the things where it's like when it's you know because I. Man, you guys are here and you're seeing some like external things that are fun and cool and facing outward, but there's a lot of tasks that go into everything. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of time that is spent going like, oh, I gotta do this drop card for this thing. It's not exciting at all. I have to have, it has to look good and I have to have all this information on it. <laughs> you know, like, uh, and, and so that's our, but, but when you're tapped into that bigger, Purpose, like the reason this needs to be awesome is because when that parent picks up that drop card about camp and it catches their eye and they go, if they care this much about this drop card, then this camp must be awesome. Yep. <laughs> if they care this much about this Easter invitation or this landing page or their social media feed, I look at social media, now there's different ways to use it. I'm not going to go, this is not a social media workshop. And if you're doing one, let me know because we're still trying to figure crap out. Um, but if you go to our Instagram grid right now, and you look at everything, I look at that as like, this is a highway, and these are our billboards, and people are going to judge in a blink of an eye if we take them seriously. If I take you seriously, it means I'm putting my best work out there. And a lot of people think quantity is like, oh my gosh, look how much social media they have. You know, and they, they hire, or they, they have an intern going like, we want you to go follow every account and like all their stuff, so they'll follow us. And it's like, it's all bait and switch tactics. It's not real engagement. It's not really communicating anything. So how can I use this medium, and whether it's your social media feed or whether that's your screens in your lobby or whether it's your newsletter and an email or whatever it is, can I craft it in a way that I'm being so thoughtful about your experience and about what your eyes are seeing that, that you know, that it, it is unspoken communication. It's the little things. It's like, you know, you, you, can, you can read music on a piece of paper, like you can read lyrics, but not feel that music, right? Like I can hear your words, but I don't feel it. And art and design and these things have the opportunity to make you feel the value behind the thing that we're trying to get you to connect with yeah. or get you to go to or whatever that is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just tapping people into that and going like, hey, why are you here? I'm here because you guys need volunteers. That's a bad reason. Because now I'm just gonna disappoint you because there's nothing in it for you. But what can be in it for you is eternal treasure. And if you're, uh, if you're like, if you make a drop card and that person, uh, three months later, and you're on vacation, you even know what happens, and they invite the person to the Easter service, that person gets saved, that goes on your ledger. Yeah. That's you. And you did it with love and intention and care, and that may have been the difference maker. Mm -hmm. You know? It really may have. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as creative, you guys have been assigned... I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> Go ahead, start over. Okay, so you guys have been assigned a project that maybe you're not passionate about, and like art comes out of passion most of the time, right? You have no interest in this project. What do you do? It, like you're responsible for it. Ugh. I've got an answer. If you guys want to think for a minute, I want to hear these guys because I'm really curious what they think. Go to your workshop. I, I, um, what? <laughs> Purpose is more important than passion. So. I'm connected to the purpose of our mission as a church, so I care about all of it. Now, my problem is I have to choose to not care about certain things because I just gotta, you know what, I gotta let someone own this because if I try to care about everything, I'm gonna like burn out hard and fast. But that doesn't mean I don't expect good things, but when I'm not passionate about it, I know that passion comes and goes. Like, passion comes and goes. Like, there's projects that, like, this should be so cool. 
I hate this. Why do I hate this? And maybe I'm just like ate bad pizza last night. You know, like the passion's not here, but my purpose is, and purpose and maturity over time trump passion. It's really good. So that would be, that's how I handle it. Yeah. How do you guys handle it? Yeah, um, I, I think kind of uh, what we've been talking about through this, through the whole panel is that kingdom vision for me is really what drives me when I have a, a project that I'm not super passionate about, especially if it's going to take a lot of my time. Um, I do a lot of print work, I do a lot of like editorial work and stuff like that, and that takes large chunks of time, and so when I'm really not feeling the passion of um, <laughs> typesetting. Of a manual? <laughs> all of uh, when it, you know, it gets into the, the details and the nitty gritty of, you know, is there uh, an orphan or a widow hanging under this paragraph and should it be justified and what will look best? Um, I, I really have to just kind of Remember an orphan and a widow is a design <laughs> term, just so we're clear. Yeah, Not an actual orphan or an actual You're widow. You're always here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have to really remind myself of that king division. And sometimes it really helps me to... Because sometimes I get I get sort of a blindness. I feel like a lot of us have it, probably experienced this, where you work on something for so long, and you're just like, oh, man, I can't even see straight. I can't see if this thing is spelled right or not because I've been working on this for so long. Um, it's so helpful to bring other people into the process yeah. for me. Um, Jake and I collaborate all the time. I will have pretty much everybody on the team look at whatever I'm doing at different parts, at different stages in the project, um, which is super, super helpful. And a lot of times, uh, that they will come with encouragement. Yeah. And be like, hey, this looks great. And a lot of times that's that's the wind that I need beneath my sails <laughs> to carry me to the end. Because <laughs> um, I've been in, you know, book land or, you know, magazine land or something for so long that I can't even, I, I don't even know what I'm looking at and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, but we can't lift each other past that in that way unless there is that vulnerability and trust. Yeah. So that's where it all comes, I mean, it's, it's really a cycle. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like you have to practice it too. Um, yeah. you, you have to it, you have to make it kind of a habit to be like I really I know I'm I'm reaching a point where I need to stop um, and I need to bring somebody in and I feel like the, the longer you do stuff like that like Joel was saying the more you can recognize that in yourself where you're like I, I know I can feel that I'm not passionate or I've lost passion for this project it's taking a long time there are a lot of revisions that kind of thing um, I need to bring someone in. I need somebody else's eyes. I need some new ideas. Mm -hmm. I need to take an hour break and go get some inspiration wherever I find it, whether that's looking through people that inspire me on Instagram, looking on the internet, looking on, um, looking at home decor, like curated spaces, that kind of thing, switching where I am. Maybe I need to go work from home or something like that. I pretty much have like a, a bank of things that <laughs> I pull out if I'm really stalled or if I'm not feeling super passionate. So, yeah. Elena, yeah. how do you feel? Because I mean, there's Elena does some cool videos, and then she has stuff where it's like this is just a bunch of talking head stuff. And like, how do you stay engaged when it feels monotonous? Yeah, I think some things that I've done here, like I guess there's like two things. So like, one would just feel like it's an opportunity to really practice finesse in the thing. So if it's something that you've done a thousand times or whatever, uh, or something that you haven't done but you just think it's really boring, then maybe just say, all right, I'm going to do this with zero mistakes. It's going to be impeccably organized. It's going to just be this beautiful, finessed, fine thing. And then whether or not you like it, you can be very proud of what you've created. That's and good. then um, another thing is uh, something that one of my managers did at an old job that I had really well was at my old job, I would just do talking head videos for 40 hours a week. Like, all I edited was talking head videos, and it was so boring. Like, it was, I was, like, great at it, but it wasn't fun for a while. And so then there would be times where my manager would see that I was just, like, dead doing this thing. And guys, I have to sip up because I'm teaching another workshop in five minutes. But I'll let you guys wrap it up, and then they can hang out and answer questions or whatever. But you all are amazing. Thank you so much. Sorry. And um, he would just be like, all right, let's try to do this. At, come at it with a completely different point of view. Not point of view, but a, just a different style that you've ever used before. And so, like, I was never into motion graphics a lot, but he said, hey, take an extra five hours on this project and do a lot of After Effects things and import that into yeah. the project and play with that. 
So you could do it the same way you've done it every time, but if that's going to make you miserable, then do it a different way this time, or use a totally different color scheme, or light it completely yeah. differently this time, just so that you're giving yourself something to play with, even yeah. though you've done it a million times. And I think with that too, like part of being creative is not just about making cool art. Like you have an ability to be creative in what wakes your heart up. And so if I get to operate on a level that no other creatives get to, which is operating in the Holy Spirit, I'm asking the Lord, like, okay, if you're doing copy or a video that you don't want to do, like part of that being able to operate in the Lord and what he's doing is we get to be creative on what wakes us up to why we're doing it. And so, man, like, if Anna's going to do, like, a copy piece or whatever, she's going to be thinking of creative ways of a new way that she can do the same thing that she's done a million times. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the times, like, that's when, like, the, the, that kind of delight thing is, is kind of stewarded really well. Um, and doing those things and, like, the little things, um, I think that's what's so cool about what we're doing, what we're all kind of a part of, is, like, we aren't just designers making design for design's sake. Like, we're doing it to actually, for a purpose, and we're doing it with someone else, like we're doing it with the Holy Spirit. And so, kind of even asking the Lord, like, man, like, what's, a, what's another way I can do this? Like, what's another creative way I can do this? Or think about this, or, or um, yeah, I, hopefully that makes sense, but, yeah.